everybody. Well, as I had promised earlier on in a different video, I was going to do today sort of an amateur side-by-side -side comparison between my two newest cameras. My older one, of course, being the Sony Handycam DCR SX40 camcorder, and my newer one being the Canon PowerShot SX210 IS digital camera. And if it matters, the camera I'm actually filming this on is the Panasonic DMC FZ8 Lumix digital camera. And this is the very first camera I ever got, or digital camera I should say. And this is what I actually started out on YouTube with. But then, when I got tired of not being able to zoom or focus when I did my videos, I decided to get this. And then after a year of using this, I decided to upgrade to the Canon. So I figured then, we'll get right into it, to what matters most. Image and video quality. So, first we'll tackle pictures, because both cameras do take still photos. But I'm sure it's pretty clear which one will emerge the winner in this regard. But I'll let you see and be the judge for yourself. Now, obviously, after seeing all those pictures, uh, it's quite clear that the Canon is better at pictures, as it should be. Being a digital camera, it has the better capability for taking pictures. It's what it was intended to do. So it's no shock that this would do better with image quality. However, this was bred for video. It wasn't meant to take pictures, so of course it's not going to be as good. But, how then do the two compare in terms of video quality? Well, first I'm going to show you guys how each one does in each environment in which I filmed some footage. Like some indoor and some outdoor footage at different times of the day, different weather, etc. And, uh... For these first batch of clips, the both of the cameras are going to be in their standard automatic modes, as much as I can really get them to be. Basically, it's as if you were to take them out of the box and film with them as such. You know, this is comparable to what you would see in the same sort of environments. So anyway, I'll show those to you and let you again be the judge of which you think is better. First, we'll do a look at a dusk scene with my old Sony camcorder. Full auto everything. Full speed zoom. Full zoom. And now, a video in 720p with my new Canon PowerShot, full auto. 
full speed zoom. Full optical zoom. Standard indoor test with the Sony Handycam. Distance is about half a foot away. Half zoom. Standard indoor test with the Canon Power Shot. Distance about a half a foot. About half zoom. Full auto. Sony Handycam, cold snowy winter's day. Almost full zoom. Cannon power shot. Seven twenty P. Same cold, snowy day. Full zoom. Partly cloudy day, Sony Handycam, full auto. Full zoom. Cannon power shot. Partly cloudy day. Full auto. Still cold. Z. 
zoom. Now, I'm sure you probably agree with me. All things considered, the Canon video quality looks far better. Now, things to note about the Handycam are that it does have the better, and I say better in quotes, uh, optical zoom. A 60 times optical zoom. And the Canon has a 14 times optical zoom. Now, the zoom on this also works much faster than on the Canon when recording. Um, but that's about the only benefits that the Handycam has over the Canon in terms of zoom. The zoom is quicker and it goes in farther. But that's kind of the Achilles heel of the thing as well. It's too much zoom. To the point where, when you zoom in all that 60 times, you get the jiggles, the shakes, the earthquakes, the jello hands, whatever you want to call them. This does not handle its zoom very well, even though it zooms in very quickly. It doesn't image stabilize that zoom very well. On the other hand, the Canon PowerShot does a far better job with its zoom, being that it's less zoom to deal with, it's not overwhelming anything, it's far easier to control, and even though it's slower, it's more manageable, and uh, helps you keep what you're viewing in the frame longer as you zoom into it, you know, sort of prevents you from gyrating all around, trying to focus in on this, okay, and then that, okay, and then that, and, you know, it slows down your recording a bit so that you can get a good look at what you're filming. Um, and I kind of prefer that, actually. So overall, this definitely does better in video than this one, at least on auto settings. So now it's time for the Sony Handycam to really throw down the gauntlet. I'm going to adjust this thing to every possible beneficial setting that I can. Basically, full-on manual controls that I've got the accessibility to. And we're going to set both these cameras up in the same environment, uh, the same subject, same lighting, same everything, except I'm going to crank up the settings on this one as best as I can to make it look as good as I can and I'm just going to leave this one on auto again. And we'll see just how they compare. This at its best, and this at its worst. Which one will win? Well, let's see.
Now, maybe it was a tad closer, but I'm guessing you'll agree that the canon still did better, even with everything on here as good as it possibly could be. And, uh, for me, that's no surprise, really. I've been using this long enough to know that it only is capable of so much, and yet this one surpasses it even without breaking a sweat. It's kind of funny. And I guess going back to the issue of zoom and uh, frame of shot, uh, there's something to note about both of these. Uh, the Sony Handycam, because of its zoom, I believe, it has a far more narrow central focused frame of view, whereas the Canon PowerShot has much more wide angle capabilities. You can take photos of larger areas at full unzoomed, you know, infinite view than you can with this, the Sony Handycam. And I believe that is in part due to the excessive amount of zoom that this camera has. It was basically meant to be a gigantic telephoto lens with a cheap imaging chip behind it. And honestly, that's all it's amounted to, really. I mean, it does basic performance video. Better than this one that I'm recording with right now, sure. But no comparison with how good this does. And, uh, basically, you can get more into each shot, into each video, more to view in this camera than you can with this one. And that was always a trouble I had with this camcorder, fitting things in the frame. I couldn't figure out how to manipulate things so that I was showing the most area, and yet keeping what I wanted to in frame, and keeping what I didn't want in frame out. That was extremely hard to do with this camera. However, there is one thing about that that made it easier. The screen here. I loved having this swivel LCD. It allows you, as you see right here, to have the screen facing you while you record. That's a very beneficial feature and really, very few, if any, cameras have that kind of capability. So, it's kind of a trade-off. Do you go for the flashy gimmicks that are sometimes pretty helpful? Or do you go for the core matter at hand, the image quality? Myself, personally, I can do without the screen. I'll manage. It won't be fun, necessarily, but I'll get along without it. The image quality is what matters to me now. After putting up with subpar image quality for so long, I'm glad to have this. And, uh, basically, I guess that's all there is to say about it. Oh, except one benefit that this has over this is that it has internal memory. Four gigabytes internal storage. Whereas this one doesn't even take any pictures or video unless you have a memory card. I mean, you could take the picture, but it wouldn't store them to anything. they just get deleted right away. Um, and you also need a very high-speed memory card in order to deal with those HD videos. I mean, in order to store them very quickly, I bought a 10-speed, 8-gigabyte card. And that gets me roughly... 50 minutes of 720p HD video, and it stores the video to the card very, very quickly. Whereas with this camera, I had it on highest quality, and I got just under 60 minutes of video on here. Again, at highest quality, but then we're talking, you know, what are we measuring quality by, you know? This wasn't very good to begin with, and this was. So, it's a trade-off, yes, so it's just the matter of digital media and not any fault of the camera itself. So, anyway, I have to give my nod to the Canon PowerShot overall.
It might not be absolutely perfect, but it's way better than I had before. Now, before I bid adieu to my Handycam camcorder, I do have some shot footage from last summer that I hadn't gotten a chance to share with you guys yet. So I'm going to do that in another upcoming couple of videos. So just don't be confused when video quality looks like it did for the last year or so and think it came from this camera. It didn't. Um, I still want to show the videos because they're an interesting place that I shot at. And um, the camera did okay, I must say, but still not up to the standard that I've come to expect. And anyway, if you do want a more thorough review of this camera or many other kinds of electronic media devices, you can check out InfoSync videos here on YouTube. They at least have video reviews of cameras and other such things. And they have a website all their own outside of YouTube with reviews on much more than just cameras and camcorders. But uh, it's a good place to see the review I saw of this camera, which ultimately led to my decision to buy it. So anyway, that's basically my quick, not so quick, little comparison of the two cameras that I got. And I um, guess that's all there is to say. So until the next time, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.